just going to give you a little bit of a plug here, uh, Jackie. In, in, your, oh, yeah. in your inspiring talk, Walk and Grow Rich, Jackie will share the insights she gained from her experience walking over 3,000 kilometres on the famous Camino Way pilgrimages and their application in business and life. So, Jackie, we did a ride together from Edinburgh to, uh, to here, to Blenheim Palace, what, four years ago, five years ago. Yeah, we and, did. That's and that took four did. days. So how long did this take? My Camino way. Well, I've walked over 3,000 miles over the last five five years. I walk a different oh, pilgrimage every go. year. Yeah, <laughs> it's not quite all in one go. No, Richard, that's right. So you, you've got a few uh, slides to share with us? I talk ready. And uh, so as soon as you give me the nod, I will, I will start. Over to you. Over to me. Okay, so hello everybody and uh, thanks very much for joining me uh, this afternoon for my talk. And as Richard did a great introduction there, um, I'm going to be sharing with you some of my Camino experiences, my Camino hiking adventure. And as I do that, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the insights that I gained from it. And as I speak, I want you to have the opportunity to reflect and maybe there are some very important messages in my talk that are just right for you right now. So we've all had to deal with an awful lot of change um, since March um, this year, and there's more to come. And it may be that you're, you're just kind of feeling tired. I know I am. But back in 2015, I was actually feeling tired then, and we didn't actually have a pandemic to deal with. And um, I was basically tired, tired of my endless to-do lists. I don't know if you have a similar feeling. I was tired of all the pushing for endless new business. Um, I was tired of a project that I was actually running with two business partners at the time, and we weren't seeing eye to eye on it. I was basically exhausted. And the worst thing about it was that I was starting to lose the, the excitement and the passion that I had for what I did um, in business myself. I don't know whether you've ever felt like that, but that was quite frightening because without that, I felt like I didn't have anything. And I think what was actually happening to me was that I was actually reaching that point of burnout. I wasn't sleeping so well. I was, I was worrying too much about the future and I wasn't really living in the present moment. I basically knew that something big needed to change, but at that point, I wasn't actually sure what it was that needed to change. But I don't know about you, whether or not you believe in synchronicity, but I just had that thought about something needing to change. And I was out in my local town in Wallingford, uh, just walking through the, the square, and I bumped into an old colleague, and the old colleague was named Tim. And Tim is somebody that I'd known in business before. And two years hence, he had looked like I felt. Um, he was exhausted, um, trying to build his business. He was looking after two elderly parents. Um, he'd just been through a divorce and the stress was actually piling higher and higher on his shoulders. And um, I spoke to him in the, in the square and he looked actually completely and utterly different. He had a, an energy about him, he's excited, you know, he, he looked almost like he'd fallen in love. And I asked him, Tim, what happened to you? You've changed completely. And he told me that he had just come back from walking something called the Camino de Santiago de Compostela. And he'd walked 500 miles and he looked amazing and he sounded amazing. And so I wanted to find out a little bit about it. So he recommended that I watched a film called The Way, which I promptly went off and did. And that made my decision at that point in 2015, I was going to walk the Camino way and make a change in my life. The thing about walking the Camino is that you have to take everything that you need on your back. So I had to pack something like this full of everything that I needed for the journey. So typical me at the time, I was feeling overloaded. So I typically completely and utterly overloaded my rucksack. I filled it with everything I probably didn't need, including even a plastic water, water, water bucket I remember packing in there. And the thing weighed a ridiculous amount. I think I tried to carry about 14 kilos, including my water, on my back. And I actually ended up looking a bit like this. In fact, it was exactly like that. So what I didn't realize was that I was actually walking um, 
up to 25 uh, kilometers every day, carrying that 14 kilo pack. And what happened to me, I don't know if it's ever happened to you like this, where you think you're gonna go away for a break and uh, you're gonna be able to leave everything behind. But all I'd done is actually I was a mirror or a reflection of the me that was exhausted and overloaded back in the UK. I was carrying too much, uh, my back ached, my legs ached, um, everything ached, my brain ached from overthinking too much. As I walked in such beautiful surroundings, I wasn't even paying attention to them. I didn't even notice where I was. So I started to get really frustrated with myself. I'd taken this time out and all I'd done was recreate something that I was experiencing back in the UK. And in that moment of frustration, when I realized exactly what I'd done, I actually took that rucksack off my back and threw it to the floor, realizing that I just couldn't deal with it. I just couldn't deal with it anymore. And just at that moment in time, I turned my eyes just up into the trees and I actually saw a light shining in the trees. My rucksack was lying on the ground at the time and I just took a breath and just took a moment, just a moment of silence. And just at that moment, I don't know what came into my mind, but I just asked for help. I just thought, I need help. I just can't seem to let go myself. I need help. What shall I do? And just in that moment, I heard a voice. I don't know whether that voice was inside my head or whether it was coming from the outside. But the voice was gentle. It wasn't like the normal a uh, hard voice that I hear inside my head telling me what I should and shouldn't do. It was a gentle voice. And the voice said, I remember this message um, all the time. I reflect on it all the time. It's so, so powerful. And the message was, have the courage to let go of that which no longer serves you. And I'll repeat it because it was so powerful. Have the courage to let go of that which no longer serves you. And just in that moment, I reflected on that message. What did it mean? I looked down at my heavy rucksack on the ground and I realized what I needed to do. I needed to start with offloading some of the excess that I was carrying on my back. So that's what I did. I started taking out of the rucksack all the things that were absolutely essential. And what happened, I was then able to travel much more lightly. So I called that voice, my voice of slow. And once I was able to travel more lightly, I could walk forward with a purpose. I could actually see where I was going. Um, I could take steps forward easily. I could enjoy my surroundings. And it was amazing, it was an amazing feeling to feel so much lighter. And of course that had an effect on what was going on inside my head. I started to feel much freer and I was able to reflect on that message much more and think about some of the things that I might need to let go of when I came back to the UK. So in business, I think we all carry an awful lot on our shoulders. I don't know whether, you know, as I'm saying these things, you're thinking about yourself in business and how much of a load you carry. And sometimes what we do is we don't let go of the things that um, we should let go of um, we take on too much, we say yes to too much, we think about the past, we think about the future, and we don't let go, we carry it thinking that we've got broad shoulders and we can do it. And all that does is actually block our path, our path to feeling much lighter and moving much more freely through our business life and in life in general. So why not think about that message yourself, have the courage to let go of that which no longer serves you, in your business and in your life. And metaphorically speaking, if you had a rucksack on your shoulders, what would you really like to take out of it? So moving on, as I walked the Camino route, um, I used to walk where well, there was many, many different miles, many miles every day and across many different terrains. So you would walk um, along plains, up mountains, through villages, um, through farms and even cities. And every day the same thing. Walk, eat, sleep, repeat. And the amazing thing though about being out in nature 
um, is that you actually start to feel much more relaxed. Um, science and research are telling us that um, being out in nature and walking is so very good for your well-being, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. Um, you're breathing in that rich, rich oxygen. Um, you're feeling good. You're moving your body. Um, there's blood pumping around your body and going to your brain. You feel so much freer. And just that simple act of putting one foot in front of the other out in nature can have an incredible impact on you. I started to feel a lot more relaxed as I let go of all the thoughts that were wearing around in my head. Um, and being out in nature also enables you to feel much more connected with the others that are sharing that journey. And on the Camino routes, you did meet people um, on the route. I, a lot of the Camino walking on my own, but um, you know, you came across lots of different people on the way. And I always thought that the people you came across with, usually there was a reason for um, making a connection with them. Maybe they had some kind of important message for you. Um, and on this particular day, I bumped into a lady called Alice. And I always remember Alice because uh, she was walking very slowly um, with two sticks and a rucksack um, just a little way ahead. And I, as I was watching her, I thought to myself, I don't know how she's going to make this. I don't know how she's going to make the journey, the distance. So I stopped and had a quick chat with her and found out a little bit about her purpose for, for making the journey and what her plans were. And as I left uh, speaking to her, I kind of thought inside my head, I'm probably not going to see her again. She's walking way too slow. Now, that was interesting because, funnily enough, I bumped into her many times. Um, she always seemed to be at the same place that I was staying at, going to bed early. She seemed to be coming out of churches just as I was passing by, having visited one. She was often seen sitting under a tree, eating some nuts. And I wondered to myself, how was she doing this? Because she seemed to walk so slowly. So one day I had another conversation with her and what she said to me um, had a real impact. She said, Jackie, I plan my day by listening to my body. So when my body says, I can't go any further, I stop and take a break. Um, I've come on this journey to enjoy it. So I do make sure that I stop in the little churches on my, on my way. And the other thing she said is, it's not a race, you know, this whole thing, it's about the experience. So I take my time, I allow myself to take my time. And the most important thing is that I look after my feet because on the Camino, you're walking on your feet all day. And if you get blisters, it stops you in your tracks. So we had that discussion and I reflected a bit on that and thought about my own business life back in the UK and how little I was metaphorically speaking, looking after my feet. I probably had a lot of blisters in my mind and also my body, metaphorically speaking, because I wasn't taking enough breaks. I wasn't setting boundaries around myself. I wasn't really looking after myself in the way that I needed. And if you reflect on that message yourself at the moment, you know, there's lots of change, there's lots of pressure, probably more than ever before. Are you looking after yourself? Are you looking after your feet, metaphorically speaking, in business and also in your life? Are you setting boundaries around yourself and giving yourself a chance to recover from the stress and pressure that you're putting yourself under? It was such an important message. And I think that was another one from what I call my voice of slow to really look after your feet, metaphorically speaking. So as I carried on, I've, I said earlier that I've done a number of Caminos. I found them so beneficial, these pilgrimages every year, that I take one every year. And last year I went on a route called the Camino Primitivo, which is um, uh, in Northern Spain. And you walk from, um, uh, gosh, I've even forgotten where I walked from. <laughs> Sorry about that. To, um, from Oviedo actually all the way to uh, Santiago. And the route is about 350 kilometers. So it took me two weeks to do this particular route. And the picture that I'm showing you um, in this uh, talk is actually quite significant. It's a, a mountain that I climbed on one of the days on the route way. And there was the lure of something called the Hospitalis route, which is, um, was, a, was a famous part of that route. And apparently there was an amazing view at the top. 
Now I'd arrived at the bottom of the mountain and uh, I was planning on climbing it the next day. Obviously with my light pack, it was going to be a lot easier, but fog threatened on that particular day. And what happened was we were all deciding as a group of us in the hut um, at the bottom of the mountain, deciding whether it was actually safe to go. I wanted to go, there was a few other people wanted to go. So I thought, well, what can go wrong here? Um, you know, we, we can just, you know, there's yellow arrows to follow, follow. It's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine. Anyway, I set off um, on the route and on each Camino route, you follow yellow signs. And I could just about see some of these signs um, just in the mist. And I started off okay, but then very quickly lost sight of the group that I was walking with. And I was left with just one other person and we were pretty lost, to be honest, on the mountain. Um, at first it was funny because we couldn't find our way. But um, as we went, went on, we were getting a bit worried that we wouldn't be able to get to the top and maybe we should go back. And we both talked about it and we just said to each other, we want to do this. We need to trust in the path. And that was an important message. We decided to just put our trust in the path and put our trust in the decision that we'd made to climb that mountain. So we took very small steps up that mountain and eventually we got to the top. It was very foggy and quite frightening and a pretty difficult uh, route. But having got to the top, you can see, I don't look my best, <laughs> but um, it was an amazing experience because just as I got to the top, the clouds parted and it was almost as if um, you'd reached the sort of highest point of the universe. Um, there was just, it was just an amazing feeling. The energy was amazing. Uh, There's a, a real sense of um, happiness and fulfillment and contentment of being in that place. And myself and the, the guy Don that I was with, we really took it all in and, and just felt so grateful to actually be there that we'd made it up the top of the mountain. So we really took it in and, uh, and we're really proud of, of making it all the way to the top and experiencing such an amazing view and an amazing experience. And I think there was a lesson in that um, and I call it thrive, not just survive. Um, and it is about um, in business quite often, I'm a, as a business coach, um, I talk to lots of business owners about uh, achieving goals and achieving their, uh, their vision. And sometimes I think what happens is you can achieve a goal, you get to the top, you make that journey, sometimes it's foggy and you can't see the way, but you get to that very top of the mountain, but you don't give your yourself a chance to take it all in and take in the experience. What you do is you just walk on and take the next mountain on without ever reflecting on what you've achieved. So maybe you've been uh, struggling on through the fog um, for the last few months um, with not knowing quite what direction you're going to have to go in and not necessarily seeing, seeing all those yellow arrows. And maybe you've had to take much smaller steps than you would have normally, but you've got somewhere and that somewhere might be amazing. Um, it might be something that you've achieved that really you're proud of and your team are proud of. So why not celebrate that and be grateful that you actually got to the top and you were able to see the view. And I think gratitude is also a message that came through loud and clear from the Camino experiences that I have had. The boots that you see in front of you are my, my walking boots. And I've actually walked in those for probably 2000 kilometers, I think mm. at least. Um, and I've never actually had a blister. So um, I always say thank you to those boots um, all the time. Uh, thank you for getting me to the destination. Thank you for keeping my, my feet safe. And actually that's an important message too, because so many people in life help us on our journey. And uh, so many people contribute to where we find ourselves today. And I think uh, saying thank you to those people that support and help you and to the things that help you as well. And it might be something as simple as your walking boots. So that's really an important message that I have to share from, again, my voice of slow. Jackie, we're, so, um, we're, we're just about out of time, I'm afraid. So uh, Yes, I'm just about to wind up, actually. You're just about there, so I don't want to interrupt your walking boot flow, but you... you that's all right, I'm just about to 30 seconds, that'd be great. So um, just to, to wind up uh, my talk, the, the important messages from the voice of slow, 
Um, have the courage to let go of that which no longer serves you. Um, look after your feet, metaphorically speaking. Thrive but not survive. Just think about being grateful and say thank you to all those people that support you in your business, helping you to climb those mountains and achieve those goals. So thank you very much. Jackie, really, really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Sorry, I had to cut you short there, but uh, thanks for your time and uh, we hopefully uh, we'll see you soon. Hey, thanks, Richard. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Take care. Yeah.